This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Ford is mandating salaried employees in the U.S. report their vaccination status by the end of next week. It's also asking union members to do the same, but on a voluntary basis. The automaker is asking employees to reveal their status in order to comply with President Biden's mandate that says companies with over 100 employees must be vaccinated or tested for the virus. Last month, General Motors also asked salaried employees in the U.S. to report their vaccine status to the company and is working with the UAW to get union members vaccinated. Employees have until this Friday to report their status, and those that don't risk losing a portion of their performance bonus. So far, GM says nearly all of its salaried workers have done so, and only a handful have not. The U.S. EV charging infrastructure lags well behind Europe and China, so in order to improve it, the Hyundai Group is launching the 2021 EV Open Innovation Challenge, where it will collaborate with startups in EV charging and services. The startups can apply for a project in one of nine categories, including bi-directional charging, smart charging, robotics, infrastructure, in-car payment, service while charging, battery management system, gig economy, and new technology. The goal is to explore commercial opportunities and launch pilot programs in North America in order to improve the charging infrastructure. EV startup Lucid Motors hit a major milestone by kicking off production of its air sedan at its plant in Arizona. The company will start delivering the car to customers beginning next month. And so far, Lucid says, It has 13,000 reservations for the air. Earlier this month, the model received an EPA-rated 520 miles of range, by far the longest range of any EV on the market. We want to know what drives your testing. OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. Mobility is becoming electric, connected, and autonomous, just like the manufacturing world. But we'll always be one thing, a reliable partner for our customers. General Motors is making impressive progress with its all-electric commercial vehicle startup, BrightDrop. The automaker announced it built its first production versions of the EV600 van, which will be delivered to FedEx before the end of the year. GM says it developed the EV600 in just 20 months, a record for the company. It also revealed the second model in BrightDrop's lineup, a medium-sized commercial van called the EV410. Verizon will be the first customer to receive the van. And like the EV600, the 410 is expected to have a range of 250 miles. It will go into production in 2023 at GM's Cami plant in Ontario, Canada. That factory will also build the EV600 starting at the end of 2022. Jeep revealed the all-new Grand Cherokee, But since we've already gone through the design changes and upgrades with the Grand Cherokee L, we're going to stick to one thing we haven't been able to provide any information on, the 4xE model. Like the L, the Grand Cherokee will have a 3.6 liter V6 and 5.7 liter V8 engine options, but it also has a plug-in hybrid option. The 4xE combines a 2 liter turbocharged 4 cylinder engine, 8-speed automatic trans, two electric motors, and a 400-volt, 17-kilowatt-hour battery pack. The setup produces a total of 375 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque. It also has the ability to tow 6,000 pounds, travel an estimated 25 miles or 40 kilometers on a charge, and get up to 57 MPGE. Jeep even says the Trailhawk version of the 4xE was able to complete the Rubicon Trail in full electric operation. 
The new Grand Cherokee goes on sale in the U.S. before the end of the year. The 4xe hits the U.S. market early next year and then launches to other global regions after that. Race cars without drivers don't sound like a whole lot of fun, but the Indy Autonomous Challenge that takes place at the Brickyard at the end of October is not about replacing drivers. It's about finding extreme edge cases in autonomy. And that's going to be one of the topics on AutoLine After Hours this Thursday. Also, Michael Sprague, who runs Lincoln in North America, will be on the show. So join John and Gary for an insider's view of what's going on in the automotive industry. Citroen has an interesting vision of what future mobility could look like. It designed an electric and autonomous platform called the Citroen Skate that would be able to accommodate a number of different transportation pods depending on what the user is doing. It shows how you could lounge around, spend time with the family, or even get in a workout. The Citroen Skate is meant to travel in dedicated lanes, which it says could increase what it calls traffic fluidity by 35%, but it's only capable of reaching speeds of 25 kilometers an hour or about 15 and a half miles per hour. But the good news is, it only takes 10 seconds to change out a pod, and it can move in any direction with a spherical tire system designed by Goodyear. Citroen also seems to have a logical approach to make something like this happen. It sounds like it wants to make the skateboard in the pods but have the cost of the pods be paid for by targeted companies. For example, a furniture store could pay for the lounge pod, or a gym sponsor the workout one. It could even expand into areas like package delivery, or maybe even a food truck. The Citroen Skate is a pretty radical idea, but what do you think? Could this be the future of mobility? You know, over the years, we've asked you to help identify some really difficult vehicles. But you all treated yesterday's mystery car like a professional baseball player going back to t-ball. We set it up for you, and you easily crushed it out of the park. We got so many responses that this is a Toyota Celica GT from the 1970s. We'll also note this seems to specifically be a liftback version. The Celica was first offered in 1970, and while the license plate says 1974, it doesn't have some of the changes that were made that year, including the federally mandated 5 miles per hour bumper. It's very possible the owner adopted older bumpers, and as we noted yesterday, it clearly has a number of other upgrades. Thanks to everyone that submitted an answer. But that's a wrap for today's report. Thanks for watching. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. Scheffler, we pioneer motion. And by Magna.